is the God of influence. Brother Sarnetta is the father of the conscious community. I'm not going to take that away from that, brother. So I'm gonna say peace and black power family. Welcome to another sign of the TV. House of Consciousness production. You already see who I got on the screen. That's My right. motherfucking man Zion in the building. To me, one of the top Hebrew Israelites. I'm gonna keep saying that until someone show me different. Right now, man, I'm gonna say peace and shalom to you, brother. What's peace, happening? brother Sarnetta, man. It's, a, right. it's always an honor and a pleasure to be here at the uh, HOK studio, Son of the TV. So in right. sitting down with the good brother, brother Polite, who was speaking highly of black women, even to the extent that he called black women and black women his God. And then he suggested that, you know, the, the same might not be true in the Bible. So that's why I took the time out to say, listen, from the vantage point and from the perspective of the Bible, woman is certainly carrying what we can describe as divine attributes. To look at a woman and not see that she is an aspect of the divinity as well is asinine in terms of looking at the pages of the Bible. Mm -hmm. In the word Elohim, right. it ends with a masculine plural. But it starts with the feminine But it plural. begins with a feminine noun, what Elo, is that? Elo, which is spelled Elo. in Hebrew, Aleph, Lamed, Wav, He. Now, some people take issue with it because in some dictionaries, they regard that as masculine, which is true. But you should get to a certain level of study Anyone can tell you this where you're able to correct the dictionary. The dictionary is still made by men. Mm -hmm. This is why our brothers and sisters in the comedic community who follow the work of Wallace Budge, they'll tell you it's a great dictionary overall, but it has several errors. Nonetheless, it's a dictionary, but it contains several errors. Mm -hmm. So when you are advanced in your craft and in this craft, in this instance, we're speaking about language, you're not advanced until you can correct the dictionaries. So yes, some dictionaries will say LO is masculine, but watch the, the icing on the cake. You can go to places in the Bible where it speaks of goddess. And don't you know the word used is LO? That's the root there. The same word I'm telling you is feminine. It's used there. People forget that the Bible doesn't just speak about gods, but the mention of goddesses is also there as well. And in so doing, the term LO is used. So right. to act as if this is asinine or this is new or this is my um, creation really points to people just not having a firm grip on the language. It's your boy, Brother Kwame, from the Lion of Judah Teach, and the name of this video is, The Holy Spirit is Not a Feminine Spirit, and I'm doing this video because there's another false doctrine that's floating around stating that the Holy Spirit is feminine, or some say the Holy Spirit is the feminine aspect of the Most High, and I'm starting to see a lot of people that's agreeing with this doctrine and it's mainly the Hebrew Israelites and not all of them so let me be more specific it's a, a guy named Zion Lex he's an Old Testament Hebrew Israelite brother and him and his camp this is what they believe in that the Holy Spirit is a feminine spirit so I want to deal with it in this video a lot of people are basing this belief off of Genesis 1 and 2. So let's deal with this verse first. Here it is. Join me to the book of Genesis 1 and 2 and the word of the Lord say. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Here it is. 
and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, when we look at this word spirit in this verse, when you go to the Hebrew lexicon, you see that it is a feminine noun. So people say, see, the Holy Spirit is feminine. Listen, it's not that simple. You cannot determine the gender of the Holy Spirit based on the gender of a Hebrew word. That's not how it works. Now, the study of the Hebrew word gender is a whole nother topic, and it is too long to explain in detail in this video, but I will give you a few examples for the purpose of this topic. Look at this, Exodus 35 and 25, and the word of the Lord say, and all the women that were wise hearted did spin with their hands. So here you have a group of women using their hands to spin yarn. Now, when you look up the word women in this verse, here it is, you see it is a feminine noun. These women were using their hands. So now let's look up the word hands in this verse. Here it is. We see that it is a feminine noun. That makes sense, right? Because the hands of a woman should be feminine. Okay, now keep that same train of thought whenever we read this next verse. Now watch this. Jump me to the book of Exodus 30 and 19. And the word of the Lord say, For Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. So here we have Aaron and his sons, a group of males, washing their hands. Now, when you look up the word Aaron in this verse, you see that it is a proper masculine noun. The word sons in this verse is also a masculine noun. So this verse says, Aaron and his sons, which are a group of males, shall wash their hands. Now, let's look up the word hands in this verse. Here it is. Uh-oh. Notice that it is a feminine noun. Wait a minute. These are males. So is this verse in Exodus 30 and 19 stating that these males has feminine hands? No. So why did it hands change to a masculine noun when dealing with male hands? Because that is not how the language works. The gender of a Hebrew word does not identify the actual gender of a person. The word hands in Hebrew is a feminine word. It doesn't matter if it's female hands or male hands. Now, let me show you this. Jump to the book of Genesis chapter 24, the 57th verse. And the word of the Lord say, And they said, We will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. Now, when you look at this word damsel, you see that it is a feminine noun. Okay, so we know that a damsel is female. The word says, we will call the damsel and inquire at her mouth. So we know that this is the mouth of a female. Now, when we look at the word mouth in this verse, we see that it is a masculine noun. Now, why the mouth of this female is masculine and not feminine? Because the word mouth in Hebrew is a masculine word. It doesn't matter if it's a man's mouth or a female's mouth. See what I'm showing you? That the gender of a Hebrew word does not determine the gender of an actual person. The word spirit in Genesis 1 and 2 is a feminine word. Yes, that's correct. But that has absolutely nothing to do with the actual gender of the Holy Spirit. That's why whenever you go to the New Testament, the Holy Spirit is always referred to as a male. The word for spirit in the New Testament is pneuma. And notice, this word pneuma is a neuter noun, meaning this word has no gender. So, is this a different Holy Spirit from the one in the Old Testament? Of course not. So once again, you cannot base a gender 
on the Holy Spirit on words alone. What you have to do is go through the verses and through the precepts like the Bible commands us to do in the book of Isaiah 28 and 10. And that's how you get the proper understanding of the Bible. So for example, let me show you something. Join me to the book of John 16 and 13. And the word of the Lord say, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come you see that see this is the messiah jesus christ yahweh shai he referred to the holy spirit as a he at the beginning of verse 13 he said when he the spirit of truth is come why didn't christ say when she the spirit of truth she has come. Didn't Yahweh Shah know that Genesis 1 and 2 used a feminine noun as spirit? Did he make a mistake? No, absolutely not. Christ said exactly what he meant to say. Every time Jesus spoke about the Holy Spirit, he referred to him as a he. These are just some of the verses on the screen. Now, if you believe that the Holy Spirit is feminine, you are going against the teachings of the Messiah. So let's get some clarity because this is very important. Now, the spirit of the Most High is found in the Word because the Word is the Spirit. Let's get them. John 6 and 63. The Word of the Lord say, It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So when you begin to live your life according to the words of the Most High, you receive the Holy Spirit, meaning you take on the characteristics, the attributes and the ways of the Most High. Then his Holy Spirit governs your spirit. Now let's look at this. If I show you a man and I say this man has an feminine spirit, if you're in the truth, you would immediately say that's off. We know that a man is not supposed to have a feminine spirit, right? So how can you turn around and say that the most high has a feminine spirit? And that is just bizarre, whether you realize it or not. So if you're saying that the Holy Spirit is feminine, that means you're saying that the most high is effeminate. This is why that doctrine is dangerous. And this is why the most high says in the scriptures, do not argue with a fool. A lot of you Hebrew Israelites, people like Zion Lex, y'all battle the committed people, uh, people like Brother Polite and Shaka Atmos and uh, what's the brother named Garfield. Y'all debate these brothers all the time, and now y'all are picking up on their, their feminine spirits because they believe that the black woman is God. So now y'all are starting to believe that the black woman is God. I don't care how good you know the Hebrew language. Do you know the spirit of the Most High God, Yahweh? Because the Most High God I serve, the God of the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 that a feminine man cannot inherit his kingdom. Join me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 the ninth verse and the word of the Lord say, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. So we see here that an effeminate person cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. And this is talking about an effeminate male, meaning a male with a female spirit. Let's take a closer look at this word effeminate. Now, jump me to the blue letter Bible. Here it is. It is the Greek word malakas. It says soft, 
soft to touch, metaphor in a bad sense, letter A, effeminate. Now watch this. It says, of a catamite. Hmm, what is a catamite, you ask? Let's go to Wikipedia. Okay, this is catamite. The subject is, in its modern usage, the term catamite refers to a boy as the passive or receiving partner in anal intercourse with a man. You see that? So the word effeminate in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 is also going into sodomy. Okay, now what else? After catamite, what else does it say? Of a boy kept for homosexual relations with a man. Now we know, according to the Bible, homosexuality is wicked. So what is homosexual? Homosexual is a male who has a feminine spirit. So why in the world would someone teach that the most high, the God of the Bible has a feminine spirit? See, that teaching leads you to some wicked androgynous doctrine. You see this? This is a male on the screen. This is androgyny, which is a male who is not clearly distinctive from a female. The lines are blurred. It's a perverted mixture of male and female characteristics. This is not a proper representation of who the Most High is. No way. Join me to Exodus 15 and 3. The word of the Lord say, the Lord is a man of war. You see that? He is all male. He, like Christ was calling him. He, he is all male. I emphasize that because you even got some people that's so wicked, they go as far as to say that the Most High, he's not neither male or female. He's just a spirit. So let's deal with that. Listen, there are male spirits and there are female spirits. If that's not the case, then why in the world would the Most High be against males who has feminine spirits? Obviously, because if you're a male, you're not supposed to have a feminine spirit. The Most High created male spirits with a higher level of aggressiveness. And he created the female spirits with a higher level of passiveness. So why did the Most High do it that way? So that the male and the female can balance it out. But the Most High Spirit, His Spirit is a male spirit. As Christ said, He, He, He.